Hello world and welcome to the first ever episode of The Top Split, a podcast all about sim racing. My name's Alex McKellar and I'm your host. Some of you may know me already, most of you probably won't. You may know me from the, the Skip Barber servers on the iRacing service or from my new Flying Hellfish Racing YouTube channel where I've posted some of my, my races recently or indeed from the Monday Night Lights competition and the broadcasts we've been doing there this season with Double R TV. The, the broadcasting this season kind of leads me here actually. It's uh, I've, It's been a lot of fun and I've really enjoyed doing that and that great community spirit that that exists around that and i'm hoping to tap into that a bit more and and build something more out of it here at the top split so my goals with this podcast that i thought i'd share in this first episode uh, i'm going to start with what i know initially with the skip barber series and aim to cover a, a broader range of series perhaps down the track as as we grow if we grow uh, I want to look at a variety of, of sim racing topics, you know, racing tips, equipment, strategy, look at the streaming aspects of it, you know, things like Twitch streaming, um, look at recording races, which I've been doing a bit lately, and, and, and maybe even tap into the live broadcasting and what, what's involved in that. I'd like to look at uh, what's going on in the iRacing world, some of the major championships, the hosted series, or things closer to home for me, like the, the Monday Night Light series, for example. I'm starting small as I'm pretty new to this. I'm aiming to start with about uh, 30 minutes of published content once a month. It doesn't sound like much, but I, I figure that's a good-sized chunk to begin with. Nothing extravagant and just, just right for a, a commute to work or similar. I know uh, I like to listen to a podcast on my way to work or to and from work at least. I really believe it's important to stick to a schedule as well and to do that I need to make it realistic and achievable. From there if I can get established I hope to move to a more regular schedule if at all possible but to get there I need to build up a pretty solid set of skills in all aspects be it presenting, interviewing or producing each episode, there's graphics on the website or the website itself, distribution and promotion, all those sorts of elements, a lot of skills to work on but I reckon it'll be fun, I'm enjoying it so far I can tell you and an interesting journey that uh, I hope you'll join me and be a part of. So once again, welcome to the very first episode of The Top Split. If you're still here now, you can say you were there when it all started, on the ground floor as it were. So thanks for sticking with me to this point, and now let's get into it properly. My guest tonight was Simon Chambers. He's he's another member of the iRacing Skip Barber community in the Australasian region. He's currently pulling together what will be the first season of the Australasian Super Skip series. It's a hosted league series, uh, again looking to tap into the, the great local Skip Barber racing community. I said in my intro I was looking to, to do about half an hour of content per month. It turns out that Simon and I had a bit more of a chin wag than I was expecting. So let's just say I met that goal first up. So without any more delays, I'll hand you over to my chat with Simon Chambers. So now I'd like to welcome to the top split our very first ever guest, Mr. Simon Chambers. Uh, Simon, welcome to the show. You're, uh, like I said, you're our first ever guest. So uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, Alex. I feel honoured that I am the first. That's, <laughs> that's quite incredible. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know how much honour there is it yet. We haven't got very far, but um, hoping to build something along the way. Um, as I mentioned to you prior to coming on air, the, the, there are a few things I was hoping to talk to. Uh, talk to you about tonight the uh the two key things i, I really want to talk about are uh the australian super skips league that you, you're setting up mm-hmm. and 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 how you know try and inform our listeners about how you go about setting up a league as a, as a secondary thing but uh to, to start with um tell us a bit about the australian super skips yes well uh we we called it the Australasian super skips, um, uh, probably in preference to Australian, although most people would be Australian. Um, I, I think it, it came around from a bit of an appetite among the fellow uh, guys that I've raced with. Um, I'd been basically restricting myself to Monday nights for a while and getting to know 
a lot of the guys in there. Um, and um, I think there was an appetite among the guys and, and a couple of them had pondered, you know, whether there was interest in, in doing some longer races or bringing back the old ANZ Skippy League and, and things like that. And um, I think I just sort of took the next step and just went ahead and started doing it, <laughs> um, basically. Yeah, look, that's that that's that's awesome because I know um, I laid in the piece in the old ANZ Skip Barber League. I uh, uh, Richard Craig who used to run it approached me about taking it on, and I was really nervous about taking on the workload on my own and all the rest of it. Mm. So. Um, you know, we've, we've spoken previously about it and, and I was really pleased uh, to see you sort of take up the reins and I, and I know I've, I've done a little bit to contribute and I hope to do a bit more but mm-hmm. um, certainly um, I, I think it's great what you're doing in kicking it off and uh, and I know myself and others would genuinely, genuinely really appreciate it. So um, yeah. going into a little bit more detail, what sort of drivers are you looking to attract, do you think? What I had in my mind was um, try, trying to get as many of, of the Monday Lights guys um, to, to do something a little bit different and, and come together in, in our own sort of little club. I I, uh, I really enjoy the, the Monday Lights stuff, uh, the high strength of field, and I think that should stay. And what I was trying to do was extend on that. Um, we do get some people who we, you know, they blow in and blow out of, of that because it's an official race and... They're, they're either there or they're not. But we have the guys who are there all the time and I really wanted to see some of those guys and um, um, certainly the the top runners that we see on YouTube every week um, come in and, and we've probably had all of them and um, it, at one stage or another in, in these trial races that I've been running and um, I, I, uh, I try not to ask too many questions um, of them. I just try and let them enjoy it. But... Um, they do seem to be quite appreciative of it, and it's good because it is a lot of work. Um, I, I'm, I, I commute uh, to work probably, it's about a 45, 50 minute train trip each way, and I have the laptop there, I've charged it at work or at home, and I've just got it open, and I'm, I'm writing uh, forum posts, I'm writing rules, um, things like that. So yeah, I've wondered about some of the uh, different times you put up posts, but uh, <laughs> it, interesting insight actually. Sitting away on your commute doing that—that's uh, an effective yeah. use of time, you might say. So no, that's yeah. good. Yeah, look, I I agree with you about the the Monday Light series and the fact that we do get um, uh, random is probably not the right word, but we get people that dr- come in and come out depending on the they might just own yeah. the track, for example, or they might have a light week in whatever series they normally run. So so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good basis, actually, to run a championship. The core group of guys that, that turn up week in, week out and um, compete for the, the Monday Lights, um, having something separate from that where you've got to sort of do more than just rock up, I guess, is uh, is really cool. So for anyone interested in, in signing up, what, give us an idea. What's, what's the format look like at this stage? Well, yeah, the the format, um, I I said it fairly early, um, so it sort of fits in, it fits in with my lifestyle, so, you know, being the one organising it, I hope I can actually participate. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, sort of departing from some of the other uh, leagues in the ANZ, Skippy League, I've combined the qualifying in, in with the race session. Um, whereas I believe you could qualify a couple of sessions in a week or something like that preceding the, the ANZ skippies. So I- instead of that, we've got the qualifying right before the race. And the races, um, instead of being a timed race as some other races have been set to be, and, and I think a lot of the um, Australian guys are used to that sort of format, I've made it um, so it's it's actually a set number of laps, um, and and it's and it's sort of aligns with um, what they do in the 2K Cup because one of the things I'm trying to do is well we don't have a 2K Cup here you'd have to get up uh, early on a uh, I think it's a Sunday think, morning yeah I think it's a Sunday or a Monday probably a Monday, Monday. our time I think yeah. yeah yes it's a Monday morning so um, and 
who can do that really? Um, so I- I- instead of that, you know, something that that people can race in, and um, for for people like me who I'm really into this, but I can only commit to, you know, doing it once a week. It's hard to get an I rating uh, up to a certain level. So we try and make it so it's uh, um, you have to have some skill and and a decent license level and safety rating, but um, um, not, you know, you don't have to be, you know, the, the, the fastest guy out there who, who spends a lot of time on the simulator and, and not much time doing anything else in life. So Yeah, no, that sounds good. I mean, uh, I think we've got a, a lot we can take from some of the lessons that the 2K guys, 2K Cup guys have taught us. Um, I noticed that they they sort of started with an I rating similar to what you're looking at um, and then um, bumped it right up. It got up to about 3,000. Uh, as a prerequisite in the last season, I think. And I know someone, myself, who, who toyed with the idea of going into that competition, it, despite the hours, I thought, you know, run a couple of races, see what happens. I I wanted to feel confident that I was going to get there and be not competitive, but just not going to be trashing the joint either. So yeah. I, I set myself a goal when it was, I think it was 2,000 or, or 2,500 at one point, I said, oh, look, I'm going to be 500 points ahead of that before I before I join, and then um, then they bumped it to 3,000, and I went, oh well, you know, what have I got? But um, yeah. and it really, I guess their their thing was it was making it high quality, really strong fields, and 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 aiming for that sort of thing, and they could they built their brand, I guess. And mm. what I like about the way you're approaching this. Simon, is that uh, you're starting, you know, with at the lower end of things, so to make it accessible and open to people, and and you know we're looking to establish a brand. So, and I think that's a key yeah. point, you know. Yeah, I, I think as it gathers momentum, there'll have to be some sort of segregation so that there'd be the main feature race. Um, we've just hit 44 members. Uh, I think you've let the last one in, um, and I've noticed that tonight. And um, that's actually the the lowest track limit uh, that we have um, for the upcoming season. So New Hampshire will be limited to 44 cars. So if everybody t- turned up, and I don't expect everybody would, but if everybody did, we would hit the limit on that track. Um, so the, there'll probably be, become a point um, if it becomes quite attractive to people that we would um, start to look at, okay, there might might be more divisions and things, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself or anything like that. And I, I think, yeah, you know, we're just starting out and, and not to think too big and let's just um, do something that's, that's, that's fair and equitable and accessible. And, um, but also it, it is, it's serious um, to an extent and um, people can feel like they're a part of it. So... Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think that's a good approach. Um, Forty-four people around New Hampshire—that'd be interesting. <laughs> but uh, I think you're right. I don't think everyone's going to turn up every week. And <clears throat> excuse me, the fact that it's a uh, you know relatively small commitment of time. I like the fact that it's a, a joint um, qualifying. You know, there's two schools of thought there. I guess you could say that. Well, with multiple qualifying sessions during a week people were able to get to you know one of them at least um but i mean that that represents a two night a week commitment rather than yeah. you know the one night where you, you rock up qualify and and, right. and go and i also like the idea that it's following the the track selection of the official racing series as well um yeah. i don't know about you but i find it um tough enough to um you know, remember one track and learn one track to the level I need to oh, in a week, let alone two, you know? Yeah, it takes me a few seasons personally to learn tracks. So about the third season that I run it, I start being competitive. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same, mate. It's it's yeah. tough, tough gig at times. Yeah, that's right. I, some people are, are sort of naturals or they're well-practiced. They, they understand what it takes to... Yeah, uh, look, I usually expect a bank or, or ditch, you know, at least two or three hundred I rating the first season on a track. So not yeah. having to learn two in, in one go would be very useful. So pit stops. I've, I've done a couple of practice races and i tell you what, I, I think I've done three or four now and I don't think I've got a pit stop correct 
once. <laughs> like, it's cost me positions and times. Last yeah. time I, I jumped someone uh, that was in front of me by a mile, they, they did worse at their pit stop than me initially, and I got so excited that I might be doing something good that I spared in the pits and I had to go back in yeah. to do a penalty. So uh, you got so you got easy. any tips, mate? Yeah, well, it's it's so easy when it's uh, 30. I've, I've got everything in Imperial on my setup um, because the books I read are in Imperial. So, um, but yeah, 37 miles an hour, I seem to, the Skip Barber seems to get up to it very quickly. Um, I, I would love to give some tips and I suppose I do have some, but at the same time, I just sort of bung into the pits, <laughs> yeah. uh, take my fuel, and when the lollipop goes up, I go, all right, I'm out of here, <laughs> um, because I'm uh, sort of towards the back, and, and I'm monitoring things, um, seeing how everyone's going in the trial races, and um, just having a good time. I'm actually, uh, if I race in the Monday lights, I'm oh, I'm sweating and, and gripping the steering wheel, <laughs> hard and staring at the screen yeah. and then in the in the trial race i've just got a big grin on my face um, <laughs> so <laughs> there was some chat in the last race um about things and and um i've i've got a few questions to ask some of the, some of the guys because they were saying some uh con- they were advising of some controls because the same question came up after the last race um and some people weren't aware that like a space bar um was able to clear a, a checkbox um on your your pit screen um so you could stop filling and go but apparently i racing have have changed that and the space bar doesn't work now so um people are talking about putting a, a macro if if you can look up macros on the forums or, or um uh, on one of the other websites that talks about, um, and you could probably mention them, uh, talks about iRacing, uh, where you can put a little uh, pit macro on your, on your steering wheel. Um, one of the guys uses that to stop the refuel at a certain point because he's he's got enough to finish the race and then and then go. So that's probably a little bit of advice. Yeah, look, I'd go along with that 100%. Look, um, uh, if people are looking for information, edracing.com is a, yeah. a fantastic resource. Ed's a, a really good um, supporter of the community. Uh, he keeps a lot of information that are great for people starting out or want to learn some of the finer details as well. When it comes to the, the macros, I certainly use one um, from memory, hashtag clear space yep. F for Fred, R for racing. Um, yep. I use that every race because what that does is that clears out um, the, if you do need to go into the pits, it clears out uh, fuel and tyres mm. so you don't have to take them because in, in official racing, really, all you ever go into the pits for is a fast repair. So it clears out the fuel and the tyres and leaves you with a fast repair. Now, for these pit stop races, I've learnt... You know, I've learned probably six things, and I invariably stuff one of them up. But um, the one thing about the fuel that I learned is um, once I've made a decision about how much I need, I can use that same macro that I use every race in the official series to actually stop the fuel. So um, so what you do is you, when you get to the fuel you think you need, you hit that macro again, it stops fueling and you're away. So that's the one tip that I've picked up for people anyway. Ah, so the clear will work uh, the clear part will probably work then off that macro you're talking about. Yeah, possibly. I, I don't know. I just found that the fact that I could use the same one, that was enough for me. Research <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no need to waste further time. Um, it, there are so many things that iRacing has to make the um, the experience more lifelike or, or customizable and um, you find these little things and they can it's something like that, putting too much fuel in your car, can cost you a lot of time and, and a position or two on the track. So Oh, so, absolutely. I mean, I, I was running in the Watkins Glen round and I was sitting nose to tail, as you do around there, um, and we were in a pack of four and then we went off in pairs uh, and someone made the comment, you know, drafting partners chosen sort of thing. And then <laughs> um, uh, I went in nose to tail with, who, I can't remember who it was, and, and yet because I didn't know, that was my first lesson. Oh, you don't have to put all that fuel in. Um, and I lost six seconds or something, race over, you know, it was done. So 
Anyway, that's a, that's a, a tip for young players, as they say. Um, so we've done some <laughs> practice races. Uh, we're almost at the end of those, but you, you've mm. got uh, you've got a, a night race coming up for week thirteen. Is that right? Yeah, r- right now it's not scheduled. Um, it is well, there is a race scheduled, and it's still Sebring because um, when I was doing the um, well, just the other night I was doing all the scheduling for the whole of next season. Um, for for the Australasian Super Skip, so I was actually booking the races in, so they're all booked in, um, and I got to Sebring, which is the last round, and um, I went to select the time of day, um, which is randomly generated. I've got a spreadsheet that that um, <laughs> I have certain criteria, and then once it fulfills those criteria, I go, that's it. These are the are the times of day settings for each round, um, and. For that one, I went to select, uh, I think it was late afternoon, and night was listed there. It was the, uh, the first one, so I was on the last race of the season, and, and night came up. And I, I thought, well, I can't select that because I don't know what night's like. So I selected late afternoon, but then I, I put that question um, out there. And I, I, think, uh, I think I'd just done that um, a couple of days before, and, and I was on the interview with the YouTube broadcast for um, Monday Lights, and, and that's where I mentioned I... I think we can do a night race. So, um, unfortunately, Sebring is very dark. Um, Mark Jeffrey went and tested it straight away after he heard that. He must have had YouTube on in the background because he was also in my <laughs> trial race. Yeah. After he's, he's very keen and wonderful gentleman. Um, and yeah, so I uh, I checked it out for myself as well because uh, um, he said, "Oh, it's a bit dark," and um, it's more than a bit dark. Uh, uh, Luke Witten up the front would would have to <laughs> tip his toe around and we'd have to follow him. Um, so, well, it's funny. I, the only thing I can think of is that um, Sebring, of course, is is renowned for endurance races. So, and the cars that do enduros are not like the Skippies, of course. They've got headlights and things. So, that's perhaps why that that night race option was available. I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't yeah. uh, done much of that. So. Um, but I was going to ask you a bit about setting up leagues. Um, mm. So how did, uh, I, I thought about doing it in the past, as I said, when when uh, Richard Craig approached me about the ANZ stuff, and I let it sit for a while at the time because I, I wasn't prepared to commit, and if I wasn't going to commit, I wasn't going to do it at all. But uh, subsequent to that, after you and I had spoken and what have you, I was, I was thinking about, okay, well, how does it all work? So... Uh, for people that might be interested in setting up a league, how, how did how did that process work? What did that look like? It's it's dead easy. Um, iRacing's got a set of um, how-to videos on YouTube. Um, also, I think you can get to them via the website. Um, and you just basically click on the leagues button in the main menu, and then there's create a league. Um, it's pr- pretty self-explanatory. Um, the league itself is just really a, a collection of drivers with a, a common interest and, and you get a page and you can put the logo of your league there. A lot of leagues don't have their logo there. Um, some of the bigger ones, I think a 2K Cup has it. Um, but um, yeah, you can you can customise. It's got a little calendar there. Um, you can... Uh, set um, admin rights to people in the screen. You can give them a, a car number, um, up to three digits for the skip bar, but I'm not sure what other cars, car classes do. Um, some leagues have huge numbers of people. Some people use them as um, a teaching tool. Um, some people require you to, to pay or whatever. I, th- I think... Um, from memory, it's a, it's a little while ago that I set it up, but I, I think you can also restrict membership to certain people from certain uh, regions or uh, with a certain I rating or, or uh, license. Um, oh, so you can do all that uh, through the system, mm. can you? I was checking out each person before I approved them. Are they up to scratch? Have they got what we need? I actually did some... I'd go and look at their profile and, and make sure that they were semi regular at least on the skippies too. Just yeah. cause, and if and if I didn't think they were, I'd actually just leave them for you, just to say so you could have the final say if that makes sense. Yeah, I I, I might be wrong about the license level. I, maybe not, because I, I have let in a D class license, but he it looks like um, that particular member will 
graduate to a C because yeah. his safety rating is very high and he's been racing in the right class um, to, to get the minimum participation requirements. So, um, so well, he won't, yeah, he won't be far away then because yeah. that all happens at the end of the season, yeah. So, um, all right, so I'm interested to know as well on the on the, um, the league side of things. Um, now, so I do the scoring for the Monday Lights myself just in a Google spreadsheet sort of thing. Do they have any facility for that? Or, like, I mean, yes. I've offered to... Oh, they do? Okay, because I've yes. offered to do it for the, the super skips as well. But <laughs> if they've got something... And you can. <laughs> you can do it. What, what you can do... Um, you set up a season, so you, you, there's a button called Race Seasons and you can um, add a season. In fact, I could go ahead and add another season after this one, but I want it to align with the uh, tracks so people can get some practice and things yeah, like that. Yeah, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, um, so they can throw away all their official races and, and race well <laughs> in, in one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, straight away you can set up, it, it asks, when you go to add a season, it asks you, do you want a standard point system or a custom point system or no point system? Um, some leagues would probably choose, I don't want any point system and I'll work it out myself separately. Um, I've actually chosen to have a custom point system in there. So so when you finish the race and, and you get your race results pop up um, after you've exited the session, it will have the championship points that you earned. The only exception is um, with the Australasian Super Skips, we will have bonus points for pole position and fastest lap. So just one bonus point each, um, and you can earn both and get two, or more than one driver can have the equal fastest lap and, and they each get a point, um, is how we're going to run it. Um, but what you can do is, um, as an administrator, you can actually add points to drivers afterwards. So... Um, it's just to at least show uh, show it in a page um, what what the points are, um, but when it comes to things like tie breaks and things like that, um, the actual official results may be different to what to what it says. So I might say someone's in fifth when they're equally fourth or something, and a tie break would actually make them fourth. So. Um, so it's just going to be noted as an indicative um, championship. So, so there's things like that. Um, the little calendar comes up with little cups <laughs> in the days that um, there's there's a session on. Um, in in ours so far for December, we've got a cup in the 17th, the Saturday, and that's a, actually a practice session. So I've I've gone and set up two hour practice sessions at the same time on a Saturday night just in case people want to go in as the same group, the same league, no other drivers from outside um, to, to, uh, to practice, um, the same time of day settings, and then Sunday there's a little cup icon and that's the actual race. Beautiful. Sounds like it's all coming together. So um, just one, one couple of more things on that before we move on. Any, based on your experience, any tips for anyone thinking of starting a league up there and anything you'd do differently? Um, not really. I, I, I think, um, I sort of carefully think about things that I've, I've done. Um, I, I sometimes would, would go off and, and make some assumptions without really testing those assumptions with, with, with people. I, I, I wrote something, uh, just trying to make it brief and, and quick, uh, a, a blue flag rule interpretation. <laughs> and, <laughs> I had some objections to that, yeah. um, and I know that's a touchy subject, so I had to backtrack pretty quickly and change it. So I probably would have consulted a little bit first um, on, on that one. Um, yeah, I think one of the most challenging things you'll find, and one of the things that concerned me the most when I was thinking about doing it was the people elements of it. So a lot of those things, whilst the rules might be written on paper, they can they can be so subjectively interpreted, you know, and mm -hmm. and in trying to keep everyone happy. You know, what's that saying? You can keep some of the pa people happy some of the time, but you can't keep all the people happy all the time sort of thing. Um, yeah. So I think those people elements might be a bit of a challenge, but um, yeah. any, any other stuff you, you'd do differently? Yeah, um, I think... I think um, I, <laughs> I suppose, I suppose a, a point I was going to make was um, to, I mean, I, I think something I did well was was 
do some polls um, for sort of asking about what sort of time would suit, who should we let in to the to the competition and things like that. Um, I, I probably would have given myself more time at this as well, um, setting it up. I'm, I'm trying to sort of accept that, okay, this is just the first go. I've never done anything like this before. You know, it, it's going quite well. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going really well, mate. Yeah, so so doing a good job, but um, I, I would have preferred to, um, to to be able to put a bit more bit more into it. Um, yeah, so I, I yeah, that that's probably that's probably it. Really. Yeah, so uh, the other thing, you know, that you've got a, a few people around. I know giving your hand. I've done a couple of things, and I know um, Russell Clark did up that great logo or the banner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think it's coming together really well. Um, for anyone out there looking to join, what's the best way to, to sign up? The, be- the best way to sign up is to go to leagues and then league directory and find us. So the league is just simply called Australasian Super Skips. Um, and basically there's a, um, on, on the right of the list of leagues, there's a little join button and you can click that and and um, it'll send a request through to me um, that you'd like to join and um, you're a, an admin as well Alex so I believe you'll get the same sort of notification. Yeah that's right we get a little notification and one of us one or other of us will have a squeeze at it and, and, and sign you up so uh, so yeah. folks make sure you get on there on the iRacing site check out the league section and look for the Australasian I'll say it right the Australasian <laughs> super skips um, we're kicking off it's uh, start of next season isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Round one, Sunday the 18th of December. That's the actual race. And then we actually have two weeks off because it aligns with Christmas and New Year's Day. Um, yeah, that was. I think that's a good idea. I mean, you're not going to maximise your opportunity to getting people to turn out if you book it on Christmas yeah. and New Year's. So, um, unfair to the guys who can't turn up. So it's it's effectively mandatory drop weeks, really, because yeah. we'll end up with the same number of drop weeks. Um, or, or same number of best rounds counted, and it'll be eight. So it's the same as the official season does. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, yeah, a couple of drop weeks in the middle, and uh, also it gives, you, gives us a couple of weeks to try and figure out <laughs> if there's anything we need to change. So that'll mm. be good as well. Um, so, And there's one more practice race, which is which is when, sorry? Uh, the Well, there's actually two. There's, two. there's one this, this Sunday night. It's in the same uh, time slot. Which is um, it starts from 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, um, which is the practice for 40 minutes and then 20 minutes of qualifying, and then the race, and that will be at the same uh, track as the official, which is this week Mid Ohio, um, yeah, and then there'll right. be one after Monday Lights as well, and yep. then that will be it, and then we'll probably do a week 13 night race. Um, there's been a little bit of chat in the last couple of days on possible tracks where we can do it instead of Sebring, just for some fun. Yep. Um, week 13 is supposed to be for fun, so so we'll just try and do something there. Yeah, you know what I voted for? I vote for Oval. That I reckon that would be a bit of fun, plus the lighting there suited. Those NASCARs, of course, don't have headlights either, so... But, you know, we got it, we got it over the most popular ones, and the, the Ovals could reap a bit of carnage as well. Yeah, it, it might be fun to have a bit of um, drafting. No bump drafting, of no, course. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, um, but also I, I probably haven't mentioned um, where the uh, there was a poll for the name of the con- contest, and I very quickly just plucked names out of the air. <laughs> and it was four four options, and I think that I, I think I had an option none of these, you know, something yeah, else. Yeah, and and the the one I put first was Australasian Super Skips, and I was sort of thinking supercars like me at supercars. Yeah, uh, of course, yeah. And and I thought that that sounds pretty cool and pretty local. Uh, I didn't think anyone would vote for it in a one by one vote. And um, <laughs> I asked Russell to go and do the logo. I'd already asked him, you know, once we figured that figuring out the name, can you do the logo? And when he replied uh, after we'd decided, um, he said, "Oh, the best name got it." So <laughs> it was <laughs> oh, just something good. I very quickly, as I say, I was probably on the train. <laughs> <and> <laughs> tethering on my mobile phone into the iRacing site. So. Yeah, well, I'm glad that the best the best horse won, so to speak. Um, 
So something I'm hoping to do with uh, all my guests throughout is, is talk a bit about uh, themselves and how their season's gone. We're, we're mm-hmm. uh, at the, the end of season four for another year, um, and you and I have both pretty much exclusively been in the skippies, I think. Um, mm-hmm. how, how's your season gone? Um, this is probably my best ever season on average. Um, I like to look at my indicators, um, how many incidents per race, um, how many sort of top fives, um, things like that, um, and if they're improving. Um, I don't so much look at wins because um, a lot of my wins have come from things like um, a weak field and um, I just skate away. Um, oh, mate, don't complain about those. I think all, so, of, mine, all <laughs> of mine have been either low strength of fields or the person who's 10 mile in front of me has had an accident, you know, so... Yeah, I, I raced a lot more when I was sort of winning. I haven't, I haven't won one in a little while. I think it was last season in the Monday Lights. So I, I switched over to Monday Lights. I've, I've been watching um, that for a very long time. And then um, uh, instead of doing it on a Monday, I was doing Saturday night racing. And, and then for, for family reasons, I thought Saturday night was probably better spent. So I... Uh, I, I, I said to my other half, I'll, I'll do I'll do Mondays. How's that? And, and she said, Yep. <laughs> and, well, that's, um, that's worked out for everyone, hasn't it? Yeah. So and knowing myself very well, what was on a Monday night. So um, <laughs> so I thought I'd, I'd come in, and oh, I think a couple of times I've come really close to being in the top split. Yeah, um, yeah. So this is my only appearance in the top split. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the uh, yeah, well, the, the irony, I guess, of of having Bernie and Double R T V on this season is uh, where we've missed him the last few seasons. Is that the uh, the strength of fields tend to go on up quite dramatically? So uh, it's excluded some of the people that really supported us through those years where. You know, we didn't have him around, and 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 it was just it was mainly this core group of guys that turned up week in and week out. So that was great. Yeah. But um, by the same token, I'm really pleased with how it's going. But um, you know, so you you were in D five this year. I, I was ch- I was checking out your stats before, yeah. and I, I, it's interesting you say about the um, the top fives and the incidents per race and all that sort of stuff. They're the sort of key things that I look at too, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And if you're talking about improvement, you know, you've You've almost doubled from a couple of years ago, and and mm. certainly you're up ten percent of top five finishes from from last season. So that must be very encouraging. Absolutely. Um, so I've been really relaxed, trying to. I mean, I know I was saying I was gripping the steering wheel and stuff. <laughs> but it, it, I'm really just trying to finish the race and not not get hit. And um, the last one we had at Imola. Um, we did have a guy on the track who was um, unfortunately on the same piece of track as me for most of the race and and causing a bit of mayhem and, and I just had to sort of back away and accept that I'm I'm not probably going, going to uh, get a, a great result and I did get passed by a couple of the, well, I guess you could call them my rivals, they're, they're fairly close to me, to me in the sort of second split runners in a championship but I really just wanted to finish, finish the race. Uh, this guy took took out two guys pretty much, um, from what I could see. Yeah, so, that makes for a challenging night, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. I, I'm I'm really happy. I just try and um, prepare myself the best I can. It's a little bit difficult. I I live in Queensland and um, uh, they they don't believe in daylight savings here. So <laughs> fades the um, curtains, didn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, um, and the the cows get confused about when to feed. That's right. And, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, sun comes up too early or something. I, I don't know what. what it does come up very early. <laughs> <laughs> no daylight yeah. like saving. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So, um, but anyway, so for me, um, with the non daylight savings, I was able to have what I called a throwaway race. So I would go in the race before. Yep. Um, so I'd jump straight on and um, just just do that and just potter around and just find the speed. And um, if I had an incident, I didn't really worry about it. And then and then I could go in the, the Monday lights and, and um, I'd do okay. And I think in the last season I had a, I had a win there at uh, Homestead. Um, and that was my first win in months to that point. And, yeah, well, that's uh, awesome. I was going to ask you. Yeah. The, I was looking at your profile before, as I said, and you had four wins this year. And I was going to ask you for any memorable ones, but a Monday Night Lights <laughs> win—that's that's got to be right up there, yeah. 
Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> Phil, I think it was Phil Lee was right behind me. Oh, okay. Uh, pushing really hard the whole race and then he made a mistake just before the last lap and so did I. And I thought, oh, I'm done for. And, and I think my mistake distracted him and he made a mistake. And there was a, also an incident. Um, we were coming up to some cars to lap and I think it was the second last lap and one of them just spins right in front of me and comes across my line. Um, oh, no. So I hadn't won in ages, so you can, you can imagine how, how oh, I nervous can. I am. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> Mate, I, I've been pottering around in the top five somewhere on occasion, and I come up to a lap car, and, and oh, just the nerves. You think, what, what's this guy got to do? Is he just going to pull over? Or is he? I saw a horrible one the other day um, where um, the leader, who it was at uh, Imola last week, and uh, the leader... Was, he was just lapping leagues ahead of everyone else, and I was pottering around. I happened to be in second, which was great, but I was, he was you know, 15 seconds ahead. And he's come up to the a back marker, and the back marker, I watched the replay afterwards because I thought, oh, you beauty, here we go um, for myself. But I watched the guy, and he was, not only was he carrying like half his front end missing, you know how the skips do that, they miss the nose completely. Mm. Um, he started weaving as the leader came, and then he moved <laughs> over far over on the on the left. So the leader's gone, all right, well, I'll go past you on the right. And then he's just turned in and T-boned him as he went past. Um, oh. So, you know, it was infinitely protestable. And I, I actually sent in a note, and I got a note back from my racing saying he'd already been protest, but they'd, they'd have a look and all the rest of it. But it was, you know, that sort of stuff just gives you white knuckles as you're trying to go by, so I can fully appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And I think, unfortunately, uh, there are guys on there who probably aren't ready to race at, at the very least and and at the worst um i suppose they're, they're not they're not there to um show any respect and and they treat people like they're artificial intelligence and um yeah. it's funny <laughs> you know like I, I often i often go back and i think well you know if i have a bad run or whatever i, I try to center myself on the the concept that you know we're, we're a class that's just out of rookies in the skips um, I don't believe, perhaps other than that, that example I was just talking about, that anyone deliberately goes out and punts people or or, or crashes into them or, or does anything like that. I, I start from a position of trust in that regards that no one's going to deliberately do anything. People make mistakes, and once the red mist sort of fades away, I, you know, I, I, I concede that they'll make mistakes rather than do anything deliberately, and and really set the expectations that at the level of driving that we're doing, you know, we're what's it a C class license um, or a D is it? It's D, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, at that and class, D will get you to skip barber. Yeah, so D class license, um, straight out of rookies, can be the first thing. First thing you do, it's a tr it's a development car, it's a development series. So, really, you get some really top flight drivers in there, but you also get the guys that have been racing for a couple of weeks. So, um, hmm. yeah, so <laughs> you've got to have strategies for both, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and um unfortunately there's a bit of a paradox you the guys who are being lapped are slow because they're unskilled and being lapped takes a lot of skill to yeah. get to get right without losing too much time to concede in the right place to yeah. not get too intimidated or yeah. nervous yeah. i i have the shakes when i come when people come up to lap me um and, <laughs> and i'll put a wheel off and uh yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's challenging, I know, um, and a lot of that's practice and, and, and experience, you know. So uh, turning our attention to Monday Lights, you were talking about the race this week, and, uh, and of course, I've got a vested interest in, in the Monday Lights, uh, uh, doing the organisation for that. Um, yeah. have, you, have you enjoyed the season so far? Oh, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's um, fantastic. I think it's a bit closer than what we've had before as well. Um, and for me personally, I, I think in the last season or the season before, I was really excited when my name was on the list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, on, that was posted on your page, and yeah. then I was even more excited this season when I started to see it. Um, um, Climb the ranks, yeah. Uh, yeah, and on YouTube, and then and then even when you know Bernie uh, first said my name when he was yeah. reading out the top five, because <laughs> I had a couple of second places in a row, and yep. uh, there's a and there's a nice swag of points there, and and that really popped me up there, and um, 
and yeah, so uh, you had to uh, explain who I was. Uh, <laughs> split runner, so. That's it. No, look at that. And that's that's part of the, the fun of it, you know. It 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 takes the simulation aspect of it to another level because it's it, you know the first time you see it. I, I, actually, I should tell a story. I showed my wife um, one of the broadcasts for the first time recently. <laughs> And she kept looking at me, and she kept saying, are these real cars? Sort of thing. It looks that much like a real broadcast. She actually asked yeah. me, and I thought, you know. So, you know, having all the nerves and all that sort of stuff, it, it really, you know, it's understandable when it has that adds that element of, of realism to it. But, um, yeah, so uh, going back to the championship, you're sitting in fifth at the moment. Um, I'd say, well, you're tied with Kevin Henderson, one of the regular top split guys. Um, he's had he's had a bit of a rough run on occasion. He's still got one zero point drop round to go. So um, you'd need to score. Uh, I think your drop round might be. Uh, da, da, da. You'd need to score anything above fifteen points, and you're starting mm. to accumulate points based on drop rounds. Um, but I guess your main rival in terms of the regular second split guys is Mark Mark Jeffrey, as you say, he's sitting in seventh, and he's. So what, what's let me do my maths and maths is not my strong point here. He's going to need on drop rounds. He's going to need 23 points, okay, uh, as a result. So that's second place or better, uh, mm. assuming you don't score any points and that's a draw draw level. So if he wins the race and you mm. don't score anything, he he pips you by a point. So there's still a bit to play for there. Absolutely. The the last time uh, we had, uh, I think it was last season. I got um, I got bumped in an early turn. I was actually right up near the front of the grid. Of, I think in the second split, and um, actually got bumped and 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 uh, headed <laughs> sort of back down the, down in the ranks. I, th- I might have even had to come in for a pit stop um, and then potter around. I think I just missed out on points. Uh, I think Mark did all right. Um, there, I, I'm usually quite good. Um, well, <laughs> I'm quite comfortable with the track. Um, with mid uh, mid Ohio, um, and and it's usually pretty good racing. I, I think s- some guys take different lines through a couple of the corners, um, and that can cause some some trouble, especially coming. I don't know the names of names of corners, but coming up up the hill and there's that blind left hander um, after sort of. I think it's about turn eight or nine from memory. You know, I yeah. cheat. I cheat on the broadcast, mate. I have a track map up, so <laughs> don't think I know all the quarters either. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a notorious place, especially the complex leading into that. Um, you've got guys who have gone off off track after the big straight, and um, and they're coming back on or or what have you, especially in the first couple of laps, and and probably especially in the in the second split where there's uh, a little bit more. Um, Rough and tumble. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I mean, I I consider you guys that do come every week and see this as you know for you in particular. I mean, this is your, your big race night of the week. Yeah. Um, you're you're turning up with far less of the known elements. The guys that do race every week, so there's far more risk in it for you guys. Um, so you know, it it's yeah makes for an interesting challenge, I imagine. Yeah, for me, uh, you know, this is it, and I look, <laughs> I look at the who's behind me, who's in front of me, who's beside me, and and I, I sort of think about, you know, do I know them? Um, they, they probably do not realise that I'm here every week, and this is for me. This is this is my race. This is the one I actually sit at work and and daydream about, <laughs> <laughs> and and try and visualise myself getting around the track and and read up on and watch YouTube and all that sort of stuff. All, all these things in preparation. Um, to do the best I can, because I don't get a lot of practice time. So, no, um, no. And, and then I, I hit the course and 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 try my best. I, I'm I'm thankful that I do know the circuit. I do know, you know, I don't have to think about what what gear I'm going to take. I, I still remember it from the last season quite well. So. Um, you know, I know, know all the corners, yeah. what my sort of strategy is. No, that's great. Like, um, it's in, it's great to hear that you put so much thought into it. I mean, I used, I was when I was at your stage in terms of in the second split trying to, to cut my way into the top split as a goal sort of thing, um, I did exactly the same thing. You know, the racing mm-hmm. that I was doing, I check who's around me. I still do it, if I'm honest. Um, if you've ever watched any of the races that I record, I always sort of tend to go through 
who's on the grid that I know, who do I don't know. It's it's just a mindset that you go through because you're trying to maximise your opportunity. Do mm. I need to let this guy go because he's either miles quicker and he's had a poor qualifying or do I, you know, just need to let him go because I don't know what the hell he's going to do in turn one sort of thing. Yeah. So uh, picking up on a point you made before about watching your name on the scoreboard, that brings back memories for me. I remember when Monday Light started, I think in the... Either the first season or the second season, when I was just a participant at that stage, um, the first season I, I saw that they were running it, I, I, I hopped on board and, I, as you say, you go to the main spreadsheet and you find your name somewhere down, you know, in, in amongst the masses. And then the yep. next season, I spent most of the time in the second split. And I think I had one, maybe two races in a really low strength of field top split. But like you, the first time I saw my name on that, that top 20 image that gets posted, it was like, oh, how good's this? And then mm-hmm. that was in, I think, the first season that I participated in, just because I turned up every week. And then um, the second season, again, I was in the second split for most of it. And I ended up, without exaggeration, I think I finished second you know, um, and maybe, like I said, had one or two races in the top split. So uh, it shows that you can do it, and it, and it does put something extra, which is part of my goals, actually, in keeping this thing going, was giving some extra for people to, to turn up for, and yeah. it benefits everyone, you know. There's extra IR, I rating on the line, a um, bit of extra mm. flavour to the competition, but, you know, yourself and, and Mark, you're well inside the top ten, uh, Ken mm. Ken Himes, another regular there. He's just outside, and he's had a couple of good uh, podiums in the last couple of weeks from memory. Um, so you know, like I said, there's everything to play for in that last round for you. Top five finish on offer um, for either you or Mark, depending on Kevin in the middle there. So it's I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys go. Actually, so any any strategy going in? Oh, look, I think I'll let it play out. Um, I, I do have a little bit of a strategy um, regarding those two <laughs> gentlemen, and that's stay in front. Uh, I, I, I usually qualify between them. Like Mark, Mark's a fairly good qualifier. Um, Ken, I don't think he uh, quite worries about qualifying so much Mm. Um, and Ken has shown a lot of pace in the last couple of races Um, and and Mark's been going very well he he did have a bit of bad luck in the middle of the season Um, yeah I I I I think I'm I, I think I lap quicker in the race than Mark, but he can pull out a quicker qualifying lap usually. Uh, and Ken uh, Ken has has turned up the pace, so he's found something. Yeah. Uh, he might be a little little behind on points. I, I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, uh, you're you're right. He, he is a bit behind, but. Um... Yeah, I, I think Mark's had a great season, at least in terms of the racing that I've done with him, uh, in uh, other than the Monday Lights, obviously. But I've re- I've enjoyed racing with Mark. He's he's surprised me on a number of occasions, being the car be directly behind me, uh, <laughs> or, or in front, you know, <laughs> like because yeah. I've 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 had an incident, or there's, you know, and and he's he's done really really well. Um, and it's funny, you know, Ken, uh, in my experience, he he scares me half the time on, on qualifying because I find him really quick. And I go, Ken, how, I'm thinking to myself, Ken, how did you get there? That's awesome. And then, you know, what he'll do a lot of the time is he'll start from the pits or start on the grid and let everyone drive by because, um, you know, he's worried about mid-pack starts and all the rest of it. But um, so, yeah, I think... With yourself, Mark, uh, and and Ken in particular, I think your eye rating belies your speed and your attitude to the racing, which is to finish races consistently and and all the rest of it. So, uh, but w- what I think is representative of that potentially more is uh, where you're sitting in the Monday Lights Championships. You know, you're in the three of you, are, two of you in the top ten, and and one just out um, against guys that turn up every week in the top split. That that says a lot, you know. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, I, yeah, I don't worry too much anymore about what my eye rating is. Um, for myself, uh, I'd just like to do the best I can, and and um, I mean, with those guys, I really enjoy joking around with them and and having a laugh. There was one race where we were making all sorts of jokes about collisions and um, you know how we nearly spilt our beer, and and then it was about. <laughs> 
there was about what beer it was, and I don't think any of us were holding beers. I wasn't. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I being in Queensland, I, I said 4X, and, uh, and, and so, you know, I that's, think it was that, probably a distraction tactic. But <laughs> yeah, that, that's a lot of what it's about, isn't it? The, a lot of the guys here are good fun to race with, good to have a chat with, and uh, and, and a joke in the middle of a race. So, yeah. um, it's funny as you say about getting nervous for the Monday lights, which you know shows what what it is to people, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, uh, Bernie and I were talking about broadcasting a, a second split one time during the season. He, we sort mm-hmm. of talked about it a couple of weeks ago. And we ran out of time, but. Um, what do you reckon of that? If we have that on the cards in the future, would would you be up for that? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I think it'd be fantastic. Um, I, I don't know how you'd do it if if uh, the top splits at the same time. Um, maybe no, no, just, no. Uh, we dedicated broadcast to the second split, oh, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, show show something, you know. You yeah, know. I think I think the idea is um, you guys might get a mention here and there during the season, but just put the spotlight on the second split for a race. I think um, just to show our appreciation for the guys that turn up and, and make the championship what it is. So um, that's something that Bernie and I have spoken about. And we're looking to maybe do next season now at this stage if if we continue with the broadcast, which I'm hoping we can. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, before we start wrapping things up, new season coming up. Any goals for the new season? Um, it's probably it's probably going to be from myself a, a focus on the super skips um, and doing official races as well. It, it might actually move me away from Monday lights, so we'll yeah, see we'll yeah. see how we go. Um, but certainly, I'll I'll be watching um, and and things like that. But I, I think getting getting this. Uh, season off the off the ground and this new new competition and seeing how it goes and building it will be the main thing. Sounds like a good plan, actually. I think there's a bit of work in there, and as you know, if you haven't anything, just reach on out and we'll see what we can do. Um, so, right. just before we wind up, anyone you'd like to uh, anything else you'd like to say, or anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I suppose uh, to yourself, keep doing what you're doing. I think it's really good. Um, looking forward to seeing what you do with these podcasts and um, stuff like that and appreciate that you've taken on board the, the Monday lights. Um, yeah, um, yeah. for me, I'm, I'm going to be in there trying to, to support the, the uh, Aussie side of it, I guess, yeah, I'm trying to... Yeah, um, keep going with a good thing i guess um because it certainly is a good thing i I probably uh yeah would thank my family for uh putting up with with what i do (laughs) (laughs) don't don't we all have to do that from time to time (laughs) well listen simon thanks very much for coming on tonight um uh, once again first uh first person on the podcast first guest I'm hoping that we can we can build from here, um, yep. and uh, yeah, look, I'm I'm loving the skips, loving the community, and uh, like I said, hoping we can build to bigger and better things, mate. So thanks again for coming on tonight. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for having me, and I I hope I can come back and uh, yeah, <laughs> offer some more insights. Yeah, mate. Maybe during the season next year we'll get an update on how the super skips are going. So uh, yeah, yeah, mate. Thanks again. No worries. Thanks, Alex. Well, there you have it. That was Simon Chambers filling us in on the Australasian super skips. <laughs> what do you think of my music in between segments? I used to love the old computer games growing up, and I thought uh, the grabs that I played in between reminded me a lot of the music you'd hear uh, in those games, the games like Mario Brothers and the like. I haven't settled on the music for the show yet, but for the time being, I thought they were a bit of fun. So just moving on quickly before I wrap things up, one of the things I'm hoping to do in these episodes is take a look at a few of the official championship tables. Um, We're coming to the end of the season, season four now for 2016, uh, and of course as a result you'll see the winners being decided in each of the the different categories of car. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the overall Skip Barber series, and, and you know if you take a look at that now, Enzo Kander is out in front, Philippe Lebert in second, Patrick 
pursue Prius. Sorry, Patrick, if you're listening, is in third. I haven't raced with Patrick actually, but uh, I know firsthand how quick Enzo and Philippe are. Uh, I spoke to Enzo j- during the last Monday Night Lights broadcast, and he was playing down his chances a little, despite having led by miles for pretty much the whole season. Philippe is making a, a late dash, and by Enzo's reckoning, could still snag it, despite Enzo being 100, 100 points ahead at this stage. My maths for this kind of thing isn't fantastic, but I, just looking at the numbers, I figure Enzo has a 40-point start at least, uh, if they better their existing worst point scoring rounds, uh, which they would then drop. Plus, I mean, he's already 100 points ahead. So it, it is indeed possible for Philippe Lebert to win it, and he's done it in the past. He could win it with a good result in the European and US strength of field races for the week. But given the the general participation you see in week 12 and the lead Enzo has, my money's on him to take it out. Uh, this would be his second consecutive season championship. On the Australian scene, Luke Luke Whitten, he's having a breakout season. Not only first in the Australian New Zealand club by a country mile, he's eighth in the uh, official standings overall. Uh, going uh, going into the the last weekend of the season, having been as high as third uh, in the early to mid season running. Russell Clark uh, sitting in second place for the region, having cracked that magic one thousand point mark along with Mick Gray uh, in third, who's also managed that excellent feat. Anthony Mansarella and Kevin Henderson round out the top five. With some some mug, Alex McKellar, scraping in a mention for dragging his sorry butt into sixth. I mean, in all seriousness, I looked at uh, I, I looked to have missed out on, on cracking the 1,000-point mark, which was a goal of mine partway through this season. I'm on 970, having run having not run a race in week 12 yet. Uh, I've been a bit immersed in the podcast, but um, got a 115-point round to beat uh, if I'm going to drop. And with the participation this week, I doubt I could jag a 145-point race, which I'd need to do to crack the 1,000-point mark, particularly as I'm I'm calling uh, or broadcasting, helping out with the broadcast with the Monday Night Light strength of field races rather than racing it these days. Um, and it's better than any points I've scored this, this season already. So highly unlikely, and I'll have to have another crack next season. But speaking of the Monday Night Lights, once again, turning our eyes to that, uh, Enzo Cantor again. He's, he's taken the lead with a couple of weeks to go, or he did a week or so back, and he's still in the lead now. Uh, he tends to leave his run in this championship a bit late. Uh, he skips it, has a break in the mid-season and it leaves his run a bit late. But once again, he's the man to beat in the Monday Night Lights championship. Luke Whitten again, showing how well he's going this season, sitting in second after sort of grabbing the lead mid-season and hanging on to it right until these last gasp efforts from Enzo to, to jump up ahead. Russell Clark rounding out the podium. I mean, it's the same running order between those three in the official series, and it goes to show that the cream certainly rises to the top in these championships. Mick Gray and our guest tonight, Simon Chambers, ran out the top five, although Simon Simon's equal on points with Kevin Henderson. Kevin's a great supporter of the series. He, he really does turn up each week, regardless of how he's travelling, and and is only outdone in total number of races across all the Monday Night Lights seasons by Jason Wilman. Those two have been in damn near every race ever. With with Kevin, I think losing out on that to Jason only only because he's jumped in the commentary booth a couple of times in the early seasons to help out Bernie with the Double R TV broadcasts. So they're two great supporters of our community. Uh, our guest again, Simon Chambers and Mark Jeffries. I think we mentioned it in in our chat. Um, they're leading. Uh, they're the leading two second split regulars, with Ken Himes running third in that little battle. That little battle. Three guys who who may not always get their names on on the broadcast, but again, really great supporters of the series and the community. So I've probably gone on much longer than I ever expected for the first show. I was going to go into the 2K Cup series that is also coming to a close at the moment, but I'm going to reach out to Philippe Lebert to see if I can't have him on a future episode to fill in it, fill in us all in about that himself. Who better than Mr. 2K Cup, as he's been affectionately known, to give us a lowdown on everything in what is widely touted as the strongest skippy competition, certainly, in the world, and, and, and 
perhaps the the premier hosted league by which I'd suggest most others are measured. So if you happen to be listening, Philippe, I'm coming for you, mate, and I'll be nice, I promise. (laughs) Um, On that note, I'm going to end the show. So um, make sure you reach out and engage with me. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, The Top Split is the page. Um, All words separate, just search for that on Facebook. Um, The website uh, is thetopsplit.com, all one word, The Top Split. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the pod sh- the podcast. It'll be on iTunes, Google Play, and most of the most most of the major podcast avenues. Uh, I'm just starting out, so there's not a lot of content up on any of those locations as yet. But I'll be putting out the podcast once a month, as I say, uh, at least uh, probably at least one of my recorded races every week if if I can manage it. Um, and the weekly Monday Night Lights broadcast, of course, I'll be posting that up on the sites as well, as, of course, you can find that at Double R TV on, on YouTube as well. So, you know, pretty much there'll be something happening most weeks and, and pretty much all the time. So, but thank you again for joining me. Well done if you've lasted this long. You deserve a pat on the back and or, or maybe a, a free pass if you come up behind me in the next official race we're in together. So... You know, if, if that happens, just let me know you're a listener and I might even do that for real, okay? Um, so that's it. There is no more. Ciao for now.